Hey everyone and welcome to another video. I am Simply G and today it's February 15th, day after Valentine's Day. I hope everyone had a wonderful day with loved ones or not. Um, I hope you treated yourself kindly, but I am going to be showing you all of the pickups for the first half of February that I got. It's a little bit late. Technically this should have come out yesterday because obviously February is a 28, sometimes 29 day month. And I also wanted to mention, this is the first video I've done since my guest appearance on Law Holly and Jin Graves' manga live stream club, uh, which was really, really fun. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the description. It's about an hour long and we are talking about hype and fans within the community. Uh, again, really really great time I hope to do more of that sort of thing in the future whether it's with them or others I don't really have a preference but I I would like to have that more so of a interaction with the community in that way uh, but if you're interested in that sort of topic maybe check it out I was quite nervous going into it but I don't think I had anything to be worried about as I said the guys are really great so yes now all of that is out of the way, I'll get straight into the manga because that's really all I have for these pickups and I hope you guys enjoy. First off, there are some older volumes. They're not old technically, but they've been out for a little while. The most recent volume has also come out just in the last couple weeks or is coming out in the next couple weeks. I haven't pre-ordered it. This one I really enjoy but it's not a super duper high priority with me and uh, when you see it you may know why. But that is Dead Dead Demons Dead 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 Destruction Volume 2 and Volume 3. I've had these the first volume of the series for a long time. This is Inyo Asano's most recent work about a bunch of high school girls and modern day Tokyo after uh, aliens and an alien ship have has sort of parked itself over over the city and sort of the impending doom that has also just sort of become background noise people aren't really intimidated by it anymore it's a interesting work from Asano. I really, really like this one. I think it's a lot easier to get into compared to some of his other works that we've gotten recently, most notably Pun Pun and um, A Girl on the Shore. These are not nearly as overwhelmingly depressing as those two series. So if you're looking for something a little more down to earth and relatable more so in the vein of a Solonin, I would definitely recommend this one. It is, of course, it does have a, like a fantastical element to it, that being aliens, but it never gets like too overwhelmingly hammy or anything like that. It's a really, really great series. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're an Arsenal fan. I'm sure you're already picking this up. But the reason I didn't buy these ones immediately was just because um, they're sort of middling priority for me and at the current price point uh, they're very skinny little books and they're still like pretty much the same price as this trim size of manga tends to be so I waited until the price dropped on both of them to get them. I got them from uh, the Amazon Australia so it came to me within two days I was really happy about that and yeah I'm hoping to read more of this the ending of this volume was a big cliffhanger sort of um, and so I'm really hoping to read the next volume soon but as I said it's not a super duper high priority so whether or not I'll buy it as soon as it comes out is yet to be seen Next we have the most recent volume of Black Butler, volume 27, front and back by Yana Toboso. I'm not going to open this one up because, oh my god, so many spoilers, and if you're not up to date on this series, I don't want to ruin it for you because last volume we had a big twist, a big reveal. It had been fairly well foreshadowed throughout the series 
previously, so it didn't come as a complete surprise, but it was still done really, really well. And whilst I haven't read this book yet, because I literally got it like an hour ago and just haven't had time to sit down and read it, um, Toboso does a really, really good job at building tension and having quite shocking and horrifying elements of her manga work very, very effectively. Uh, if you're not familiar with Black Butler, it's about a young Earl who is the head of his family after his parents were killed under mysterious circumstances. His family home was burnt to the ground and he was kidnapped, disappeared, missing for two years. When he shows back up, he is um, escorted by a handsome butler who we know as an audience is actually a demon because during his period of being kidnapped he made a deal with the devil in order to get revenge for his family's murder and sort of all the bad things that had happened to him up until this point. And now in, as the current head of the household, he now has taken over his father's role as the Queen's watchdog, which means that he is within like the very bowels of society, the worst of the worst, fixing up any problems that may cause an issue to Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria. So it's a very, it's an interesting mix of like gothic horror and mystery. Uh, although there is like comedic elements, it does have a bit of like switching between the dramatic stuff and the more lighted hearted stuff. I've said this before, Black Butler isn't a perfect series, it's not my all time favourite, but I do think when it's trying to do things seriously, it does them very very well. There are some absolutely chilling parts to this manga which may not be immediately apparent considering the more comedic tone that a lot of the arcs and a lot of the earlier stuff has. Um, yeah, this volume, as I said, I'm not going to open up because definitely spoilers, but with this volume and with the previous volume, I can definitely see that there is a finality to what's happening. I can see Toboso is definitely sort of wrapping up this series, which will be somewhat of a sad day because this series has been going on for such a long time. Um, it's been throughout my entire, you know, life as an anime and manga fan. And I do say this with every volume that I get. I'm not a huge fan of the anime adaptations of this. Some seasons or adaptations are better than others, but the manga is definitely my go-to. If you are wanting to try this series, I would recommend this above the anime adaptations. They're not terrible, but they're not great. They're just very middling, mediocre, like passable. So yeah, do with that as you will. But yeah, really, really great series. I'm really, really excited for this particular volume and um, whether this series finishes in the next couple volumes or not, which I do, that's what I presume is going to happen because it does feel like we're, we're reaching the end. Um, sooner or later, the series is going to end and I'm going to be, you know, I'll have another series that is sort of long-standing within my experience as a fan ended and it'll be a weird one not having more Black Butler to look forward to. So yeah, if you're wanting to check the series out, definitely do. It's, it's an interesting one. And then we also have volume 10 of Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun by Izumi Subaki and this series always is just never disappoints me. It's so funny. Uh, you, as you can see, a majority of it is four coma or four panel manga, so a very sharp and to the point comedy series about a bunch of teenagers in high school and their sort of hijinks surrounding their love lives and personal lives. If you don't know what this series is about, it's about a teenage girl 
who confesses to her longtime crush, uh, Nozaki kun, and in doing the so she her her words are I'm a big fan of you, and so he gives her his autograph. And through this series of events, he doesn't understand that it's actually like a love confession for one, but two, she realizes that he is a very popular, famous shoujo manga artist uh, working under a pseudonym. And through this, she gets roped into his personal life. She starts helping him with a lot of background art, and she's introduced to a lot of other kids in her school who also know his secret, some who don't, and just all a great cast of characters. We have our two main characters who are on the front here. We also have uh, two other characters who are from the drama club who are very, very fun to read. We also have um, our main male protagonist's best friend, whom he has based the main female character in his manga off of. Um, and we also have a ki one of our main female characters' friends uh, and her sort of crush, sort of just guy she, she annoys, um, who are also really fun to read about. We have siblings, we have oh, as well the sort of process of shoujo manga and the editors and all of the stuff going on there, as well as some other manga show shoujo people. It's really fun and really funny. Um, this is a great one that um, compared to like Black Butler that I mentioned, this is one that I definitely recommend the anime for. It, I think if you start with the anime it gives you a better sense of the timing of the comedy and then may, it may be a little bit easier for you to get into the manga because I know that comedy manga isn't for everyone it can be very hit or miss and certain types of comedy doesn't work but personally I've never met um, anyone who's who's tried this series who didn't enjoy it uh, it's very very funny really a great look at sort of shoujo manga and the tropes and, and having a real um, self-aware giggle at themselves it's really, really good. It's not actually a shoujo manga. This is a, a shonen romance manga, but it's really fun and funny. And obviously, as I said, does have a lot to do with shoujo manga. So if you're wanting to try it, give it a shot. It's really, really good. And speaking of love, um, considering yesterday was Valentine's Day, it is a pretty a uh, good timing because I have a little bit of Yuri and Yaoi or BL to show off so yeah I'm just gonna get straight into that first of all we have the first volume of After Hours by Yuta Nishio this is a Yuri manga about two young women in their mid-twenties slash early thirties who meet at a club and sort of end up becoming friends and sort of falling into a relationship. It's a lot to do with sort of clubbing in the EDM music scene and sort of the culture behind that. We have our uh, main character here, the blonde, who's sort of in a stagnant period of her life. She doesn't really know what she wants to do. And in meeting this other girl, this other woman, she sort of discovers a world that she never really imagined or never really considered and so now she finds herself becoming a part of this world and wanting to learn more and get to know everything about it. This is a three volume series that is completely released. I do have the other volumes on their way to me hopefully soon. I read this first volume for Shay Geeks Out um, her 24-hour man 24 manga love readathon, which was last week, and I, I really, this was the first book I read. It definitely set the tone. It was very, very good. I cannot wait for the other two volumes. I've heard great things about this series. I'd wanted to buy it for a long time, but I did want to wa wait until it was completely released and to see how people were enjoying it. 
as well. This is um, one of the first Yuri that Viz has put out. Um, this as well as a, a Sweet Blue Flowers, I think, are the two that come immediately to mind. But with this and with that series, it's definitely a strong start to the publisher sort of branching out into this genre. And if you're a fan of Yuri and you want something different from the more typical, like, S-class, private girl, um school type thing definitely check this one out especially obviously because we have adult characters we have a more adult sort of dilemma of you know just being in that that point in your life where you're not quite sure what you want to do uh, which never goes away unfortunately it's not just a you know graduation or high school thing that you have to deal with but uh, it, it is really really nice to read. I really enjoyed this first volume. I liked both of our characters and the dynamic they seem to have as well. It's it's really solid start and as I said I'm really looking forward to the first or the next two volumes of this series. Next we have Kasei-san and Cherry Blossoms. This is the fifth book of this series. I have been waiting forever for this series. It, it feels like so long ago that we got the fourth volume. Um, I think this is technically the last volume of the original story. As you can see, it has a lot to do with graduation and that sort of thing. But from what I can tell, this is continuing on with sort of the, I guess, sequel series to the, the main series. So not quite done yet. It doesn't say like final volume anywhere in here. So I look forward to more with this series. It never disappoints me. It's so uh, just everything that I want from a Yuri. And this is definitely one that I would recommend if you don't know much about Yuri or you want to try something. It's a very good starting point. Uh, I've said this before with regards to Yuri, but there's two different camps. There's the very um, soft and fluffy and that special or that S-class, all-girls private school, almost sexless type of Yuri that is very, very popular. And there's also the much more, like, I, I call it skeezy, but it's usually, like, very sexualized very much not um it, it feels more so like it's written by men for other men um so there's those two camps and then this one sits pretty firmly in the middle it's a good balance of like the realities of of um you know being attracted to someone of the same gender it's not this totally sexless relationship that doesn't have our our couple physically attracted to each other rather than just like romantically attracted to each other so but it's also not just like you're a voyeur on their their life and you know watching them and seeing like oh when are they gonna kiss when are they gonna kiss and sort of eroticizing it if that makes sense so it's a good balance it's really well done uh, Kase-san and uh, Yamada, I think is her name, are really, really sweet. They're a great couple and really fun to follow. So yeah, if you're looking for a Yuri and some, you're not quite sure where to start, this is a great starting point. At five volumes, it's not super duper long. As I said, it is probably still continuing, but um, there's a lot of really good stuff in this series. Going into BL, we have volume 11 of The World's Greatest First Love, The Case of Ritsu Onodera by Shingeku Shungiku Nakamura. This series is definitely a guilty pleasure for me. i got to be careful opening up this series because it can get pretty explicit pretty quickly. Um, I'm, I've said it before, I'm not a huge fan of Nakamura's other very popular work, that being Junja Romantica, but this one is one that... I don't know, it, it improved enough on the stuff that I didn't like about Junja Romantica that 
this is fairly tolerable and it just, I don't know, hits a sweet spot for me. But if you're not familiar with what this story is about, we follow Ritsu, our main character, who 10 years ago confessed his love to his crush, his, his senpai in middle school, high school, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, I believe it was middle school. Um, and then after dating for a short period, they there was a misunderstanding and they had a really, really messy breakup. Um, since then, Ritsu has sort of sworn to himself that he'll never fall in love again. He's never going to be that foolish. His heart was broken so badly that um, he just doesn't want anything to do with love. He actually moved to England to finish his schooling. So it's been a long time and he's been very burnt about it still. So it is now 10 years past and he is an adult, obviously. And his family owns a publishing house and which he was working at for a long time. He really loves editing, he really loves reading and because of his hard work and his passion, he was getting, you know, better and better authors to work with. He was being recognized more um, within the company, but that did cause a lot of jealousy amongst his co-workers who basically said that all of his achievements were because of his family name and because he was the son of the president. So in order to prove to himself and to everyone else that it's it was due to his own ability that he can, you know, do stuff. He's not just writing the coattails of his family name. He quits his job and joins a rival publishing company, wanting to go into literature like his previous job, but instead was assigned to shoujo manga, where he has now become like the newest editor for the magazine. He has no no previous experience with manga, especially shoujo manga, so he's definitely a fish out of water, but he wants to sort of prove it to himself that he can do it. After sort of committing himself to it, he realizes that the head editor, his boss, is actually his first love, the, the boy who broke his heart, so to say. And um, they, in realizing this and talking to him, he discovers that um, this other boy, this other man now, was under that same imp impression that they it was this misunderstanding and his heart was broken. He hasn't been able to get over him since and he's still very much in love with him and um, wants to sort of reconnect now that they've met again and have sort of cleared the air about their misunderstanding. But because of the heartbreak of their first, you know, time dating, Ritsu is very, like, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want anything to do with love, and so it's up to Takano, our other character, to sort of make him realize or that he's just not being true to his heart type of deal thing. So, yeah, if that makes... If that's interesting, you may want to try it out. It's not a perfect series. Um, I don't know. It's just something that is a very, like, middling. It's not completely abhorrent. It is still fairly tropey. I like the, the secondary couple in the manga, which is Kisa and Yukane. Um, and they're... I think they're more fun characters to read about, but... In saying that, I do still like these two as as the main couple. I like their dynamic, and I will give Nakamura um, props with how she writes comedy and like the the react how she draws reactionary faces and the comedic chibi style. I think that's all very good, and I do enjoy those parts a lot. If you're wanting to learn about like the manga cycle and publishing, um, editing, this does actually have information about that. It is quite fairly well done and will teach you things, but it is first and foremost like a love story. It does have quite a lot of explicit parts to it, um, and it is like a lot of Nakamura works, very, very long, um, 
with this book, like, we're still just getting, like, there's a countdown to how many days before Ritsu um, confesses or, like, admits he's in love. And it's gotten down to, you know, the two months or whatever, but that, that time goes so slowly. But it is interesting to watch this sort of dance between two people who hurt each other before and now are trying to muddle their way through, especially considering that one of them, at least, has really had no other romantic experience, really closed himself off since then. So yeah, it's not the perfect series and I'm sure everybody who knows this series uh, knows whether or not they want to read it, but it is okay. Like it's not terrible, um, but it's not fabulous, but it's good. It's okay. You have to make the decision as to whether you want to read it. And this volume in particular was a company trip to on an onsen in the prefecture in which Takano spent his his high school years so we have the opportunity to learn more about him and sort of for our main characters to grow closer in a sense but it's always like two steps forward and like three steps back with this series so yeah you, you can't ever really win but we're getting there slow but surely finally for manga we have another BL and that is Kodansha's first foray into the demographic with Ten Dance by Inoue Sato. This is, I had heard really good things about this series. I didn't really know much about it aside from it was about dancers and one of my friends really enjoyed it. And I read this and I'm, I love it. It's, it's really, really good. It's about two ballroom dancers, one who specializes in standard and one who specializes in Latin. So two very, very different styles. Um, and the standard dancer is sort of top of the world. He's won so many prizes and they're both very accomplished, but our Latin dancer is more so like established within Japan whereas the standard dancer has won international competitions or been regarded as like one of the best um, dancing pairs with his partner in the world and so they ha they're very different personalities there's a lot of conflict with each other but um, our standard dancer poses the, the, the proposal to teach each other their corresponding dances in order to be able to compete at the 10 dance where couples or dance partners have to dance both styles 10 dances all together so five of each and it, so obviously in order to do so you have to be very very good at both types of dance and for the two of them there they don't really have a huge amount of experience with the other the other style of dance so yeah it's a really 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 great read I really enjoyed it um, it's one that sort of like with uh, the man of tango obviously also focuses on dance and especially Latin dance tango salsa that sort of thing um, but, so there's a sensuality to it, and then we have the standard dance, which, even though it's not nearly as, like, oozing sex appeal, is definitely still very charming in its own way of um, flirtation and, and courting. So, yeah, we have our, our two main characters and their partners, who they dance with, you know, in general, the two women, and... Um, it's really, really interesting. I'm looking forward to it because you can see how their personalities uh, clash against each other, but there's still enough interest and they, they don't necessarily admit it, but they are, they definitely respect each other and admire each other. And that just draws them closer and closer together. 
this is an ongoing series uh, and this is only volume one so it doesn't like it's not really uh, an explicit or like obviously sexual relationship as of yet or even like the admittance of anything sort of pure interest purely outside of dance but it is fairly obvious you can see it building and bubbling and and there's just a lot of chemistry between these characters I don't know I, I would definitely recommend this especially if you're a BL fan I wasn't too thrilled about Kodansha's other BL announcements that they made so this is the only one of their current titles that I am actively going to be buying. But it was, it's such a good series and I would, yeah, if you're a fan of this genre, of this demographic, pick it up because it's worth the look. And finally, not a manga, but a light novel, or it might just be a normal novel. I don't know. I don't think this has any pictures, no, so I would say it's just a normal novel, and that is Vertical's release of A.G. Mikage's Masquerade and the Nameless Woman. When this series was initially announced as licensed, it was called uh, Serial Killer Detective. I haven't had a chance to read this yet, because again, I just got this yesterday, so uh, yeah, I just haven't had time, but Serial Killer Detective, I think... They changed the name because it gave the impression that it was a detective who was a serial killer, a la Dexter, but I think the actual story is more so a detective who follows serial killers or stops serial killers. I'm a big fan of like this sort of crime mystery cat and mouse game. Um, I really like Vertical's sort of single volume books that they put out. Uh, they have some really interesting stuff. Uh, I would probably say this is within the same genre or demographic as The Dark Maidens. So if you like that book, you may want to check this one out. But I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a little while since I've had a series that a, a light novel series that isn't attached to any like other franchise that I've been really wanting to read and this one even when it was initially announced definitely piqued my interest so I'm really looking forward to getting into this book over the weekend. I'm sorry I can't give a more uh, like proper thoughts on it mainly because I, as I said I haven't read it but if you are wanting to read my thoughts on it I will be writing a review for EnglishLightNovels.com on it and I'll share that on my social media. I'll also post it in the description below once I've done that. So if you are wanting to see my thoughts on the story, the characters and that sort of thing, I'll do that because it is one that um, maybe people are wanting to know more about. So uh, yeah. So that is everything that I got for the first half of February. Quite a few romance focused ones that, as I said, wasn't planned, but it just seemed to work out that way. Really, really looking forward to the new stuff that I just got and haven't had a chance to read. I'm going to be reading those right away. But always, a, like, I think a pretty good mix of new releases and then some older stuff because Whilst they're not super duper old, there are some things that I want, are, am wanting to catch up on or wanting to start to buy. And 2019 isn't, as I've said pr last month, it isn't going to be to the level of pickups that 2018 was. I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller, but I sure hope it isn't. Um, but I think that is in part due to a lot of the stuff that I wanted to pick up, I have now. So... Uh, there's not too much for me to catch up on, but thankfully there's some really, really great stuff coming out all the time from publishers. Ten Dance obviously being a new debut. After Hours isn't a super new debut, but it is a very strong series, and Masquerade and the Nameless Woman, always really nice to see some more prose that is, again, sort of detached from more well-known manga or uh, anime 
and just something a little different and I really appreciate vertical doing that sort of thing but let me know if you've read any of these if you're reading them or if you agree with my opinions or my uh, just talking about them or if you totally disagree I love reading all of your comments as always my Twitter will be in the description down below you can click on that see me there follow me there I am on fairly regularly so if you're wanting to talk to me uh, directly that's the place to go I also have my book depository affiliate link down there which again as I always say you're not obligated to use but if you do it does help me out a little bit I love that um, website very very much <laughs> it's definitely one that I use on the regular and if you're a non uh, non US manga fan like myself it's definitely the best place to buy English releases um, thanks to its worldwide shipping but as always thank you guys so so much for watching I'll catch you in the next video bye till then